Okay, so um, I've done a video on graphene and graphite and intercalated compounds before, but looking at it, the audio quality was appalling and the visuals weren't too good either, so I decided to redo it as a bit of an update with much better quality. So, a graphite intercalated compound is essentially where you force atoms into the layers of the graphite. Now, graphite is made up of layers like this, as we know, and if we force molecules in between those layers, so it's like that, then we get an intercalated compound. Now, it, what we're going to do is um, iron chloride, so ferric chloride, we're going to force it in there. If it's between each layer, then it's what we call a stage one. If we have a layer with nothing in it, and then on the next layer we have our intercalation compound, we get a stage two. If we have two layers like that, and we have sort of three layers, sorry, and we force it in there, we get a stage three. So the stage of intercalation compounds relates to the number of layers in between that don't have an intercalation compound. <coughs> now, one of the interesting things about this is that it actually drastically changes the property of the graphite, depending on what molecule you actually force in there. And they're often called artificial metals. So if we force iron chloride in there, what happens to the thermal electroconductivity is that they shoot up. Now, they're also acceptor types, so it's actually a p-type graphite that we've made. Now, if we make an n-type, which we can do with um, potassium, for instance, or um, zero valent iron, will give us an n-type. And we join those together with metallic contacts. What we've actually got is a Peltier device. We put contacts between those and either heat this, or we cool this, then we get thermoelectric generation and we get um, a power generating device by heating or cooling the graphite substructure there. So we can do something really interesting with these graphite intercalation compounds as well. Now, they're used often to make a graph expanded graphite. So once you've put the intercalation element in there, and as I say, we're going to use iron chloride, but um, you can use sulfuric acid. There's lots of things you can use. And you heat this, this explodes, and you get the worm-like structures of expanded graphite. So this is way to make expanded graphite as well, is to intercalate the thing first, and then heat it to a very high temperature very rapidly. Or you can put it in a microwave, incidentally. We've done a video on microwaving this stuff. And it will expand out to make your expanded graphite. Then if you recompress that down, you get a very conductive and flexible graphite foil. So the intercalation compounds are also a precursor to um, the expanded graphite and the graphite foils. So it's another really good use for them. So there's plenty of reasons to be making intercalation compounds, and they're um, astonishingly useful things. And you can intercalate quite a lot, but like I say, we're going to intercalate um, and chloride. <laughs> Okay, so in order to make this stuff, um, what we have here are four components. We have 75% sulfuric acid, so I used 96% um, sulfuric acid and watered it down with the deionized water to get to my 75%, obviously adding the acid to the water. So we've got 75% sulfuric acid and there's 100 millilitres of it there. Here we have um, 20 grams of uh, 325 mesh natural flat graphite. It's a good size. Um, it's big enough to actually do something with, uh, it's small enough so that intercalates easy. So it's a good size, it's 325 mesh. You can do bigger meshes or smaller meshes, but this is a good one. Uh, we have 7.2 grams of potassium permanganate and 3.4 grams of iron 3 chloride. And we're going to add those to the sulfuric acid. Now, I'm not going to do it inside because um, this fumes quite a lot and the fumes are quite acrid. So you want to be outside or in a fume hood from this and downwind from it and obviously wear some gloves. So we'll take all of this stuff to um, the outside and do the reaction there. Okay, so there's only 100 millilitres, incidentally, in this rather large beaker because you get quite a lot of volume expansion. So you need to account for that because when you add the graphite, the reaction is actually ongoing. It'll froth a bit and you need to stir it like mad. Now, as I say, when we add the iron chloride, then we'll get a uh, reaction and a degree of fizzing and heat, and there it goes. So 
add it and stir it, and you can see the um, large amount of fuming that we're getting from there. So this is not something you want to be breathing in, which is why we're outside. And we get this nice yellow sulfuric acid and chloride mix. Once we've added that, we need to be adding our graphite. And you just add the whole lot. And stir it up. So just add it in and stir it. Now the reaction will begin and you'll get a degree of frothing. But all you need to do is keep stirring. <coughs> and as we stir you can see it forming up. And as I say, that is because the intercalation reaction is actually already happening. And when we add the potassium permanganate there, that reaction will get crazy. So just keep stirring. And then we add the potassium permanganate. <coughs> now when you add the permanganate, the reaction will get going and it will turn into a kind of thick brown jelly. And there you can go. You can see it's quite thick, quite brown, and fuming off with brown fumes. So you stir that madly until that reaction has died down a little bit. It gets very hot incidentally as well. So there we go. We're pretty much there. Uh, and what you need to do now is just leave that for an hour at about 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you've done that and it's had an hour at 40 degrees, what you do is chuck it into a large container, something like this. This is a flower vase. Pop it into the bottom, put in two litres of water, and then leave it to settle out. It'll settle out quite quickly, and it'll form like a layer at the bottom here, and this will be a dirty brown colour. Pour that off, repeat that three times, and what you get out is your intercalated compound, which looks like this. Um, this has been dried overnight. I popped it on at uh, 60 degrees on an open pan and I put it onto a surface of 60 degrees and overnight it dried and formed my intercalation compound. And there it is. So that's your end product, which actually looks surprisingly um, not very different to um, graphite. Uh, this incidentally is the stuff that I used in super easy graphene. So if you drop this into hydrogen peroxide and have a look at the um, super easy graphene, this is what I used to make it. So now you know how to go about making that compound that you drop into um, hydrogen peroxide to make graphene. So you can make graphene out of this stuff. The other thing that we did with it was um, put it into the microwave, which I did in another video. And if you put it into a microwave, what you get is this stuff, which is exfoliated graphite. So you can make graphene out of it, you can make exfoliated graphite out of it. And the other thing you can do is, if you just put it into a vise and you compress it, just as it is, what you get is this, which is a, a really weird uh, metallic graphite. And the conductivity on that is uh, very impressive indeed. So, a really useful and interesting compound to be making. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.